Hello and welcome to this uh, How to Be a Great GM tutorial video on how to draw a map for a one-shot or a scenario that you have just created. So what we have done is we have created this adventure which I think we need to give it a name. If you haven't watched the video on how we came up with the adventure itself I recommend that you go and do that before watching this as this video takes information from that video on how to create a one-shot story and uh, embellishes it and uses it to design the map. I think that uh, we can call this the perhaps we can call this the island of Dementos since that is the name of our arch villain in the film so uh, in the uh, session I'm going to create a new folder a new file here this is for online play, so it doesn't have to be huge. I'm going to make a square map, so I'm going to make it 3,000 by 3,000. And there's our new canvas. All right, so as before, new layer. Never work on your background layer. You're going to come back to that a little bit later on. I will go to our tools, which I'm going to try and embed there. Hopefully you can see that now. So I've gone to my tools. I've selected my pen tool. I'm going to go into black. I'm going to choose a size of about three or so. Then I'm going to come to my map. This is an island that we're drawing. So I'm just going to use some guidelines here to, oops, to create the space. Mm -hmm. I love it when it does that. So there's my island space. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and draw now the whole idea is that the ship crashes into the island and our characters are stuck now i don't want the characters to spend the game trying to salvage the ship get off the island that sort of thing that's not the goal the goal is to get them to go and release this ancient evil known as uh, dementos ertid from his tomb so i'm going to draw the island in such a way that our characters have no choice but to go there so oh, as you can see already a stuff up my opacity wasn't at a hundred percent so I've just increased that so now I'm just going to very carefully and and quickly because you can always come back and do this I'm going to draw out the island now a, a temptation would be to draw the island in the shape of something that we could recognize from outer space a skull for example but I don't want that I just want this to be an interesting island that our players can explore and get lost in and die in as a matter of fact I've got a few things that I have to include as well I need a large ravine or a trench that uh, will keep them from their goal so I have to bear that in mind in terms of this design so if I do that and I throw in a few little bits here that means the ship can crash in that cove here somewhere and they'll have to come down here maybe uh, let's do a half moon crescent violating my own boundaries that I've made but uh, I think that'll be worth it and just to finish it off they're not likely to get to these outlying areas but again, if you're going to go to the trouble of doing a map, you might as well do it properly. And so we end up with something that looks similar. Like this. Let's fracture something in there a little bit. All right. Now this is a real-time video, so I'll have to think of stuff to talk about. And if you want more detailing on, on the techniques and things I'm going to use, you can go and check out map making. There was a series of videos that I did there. All right, I'm going to put in a lake here. Now that I think about it. I don't want the players to come up here. So I'm going to try and dissuade them as much as I can um, in terms of, of not wanting to come up to this area. And I'm going to do that with swamps. The theme of the adventure is, an adv well, of the theme of the, the, the session is an adventurous type of session, but a session that has elements of horror to it. 
So I'm going to play on, on that. All right, so there's my outline. I'm quite happy with that. We're going to rename this. Uh, I'm not too familiar with this. And we're going to rename this land. All right, new layer. This is going to be a layer where we draw in the mountain ranges. So I have to have a gorge somewhere on the map where the players are going to be walking through. And I think I'm going to put that down here. So the ship is going to crash somewhere here. And then down here, I'm going to have this massive ravine that they're going to need to cross. Now, I haven't yet worked out a ravine type piece of information, uh, you know, how to draw that. So it's uh, a nice little opportunity now to try and figure out how I'm doing that. I'm just erasing this line quickly from this layer because that was very straight. A very straight line. We don't like straight lines on geology maps. Okay, so back up onto the ravine. And the ravine I'm going to do is a series of ripple lines. So almost contour lines, if you like, um, that will normally this would indicate a river perhaps but with multi of them, multiple of them sitting on top of each other, like this, it should indicate that there is a, a ledge here. I'm gonna put some mountains up here. I'm, I'm drawing it on the same layer as the mountains uh, because it is technically a geological feature. Um, I'm just really rushing through this I don't want to take too much time uh, this is also going to prevent the players from you know trying to walk around the gorge they have to go over it somehow because I've got planned there uh, an aerial undead shark attack I know it sounds ridiculous but I might change that actually now that I speak about that to an undead octopus that lives inside of the crevasse the gully the more I speak about it, the more I think that works. So this for me is an example of the reciprocity that happens between the map making process and the, the adventure based process. So I had undead sharks because, well, I thought that would be quite cool. But thinking about it, it could be cool, but it could also be a little bit silly. Um, I'm not too keen on, on silly because the characters wanted you know, a horror type setting. And the silly can work, but uh, what's more terrifying than trying to cross a bridge and these tentacles coming up around you? It might be a little bit cliched, actually. Also, now that I think about that, but well, you know, sometimes cliches help set the mood um, if they're these long tentacles trying to drag them down. I'm just uh, drawing some cruel geography here so that they don't have any delusions of wanting to come around this way to get to where their goal is um, I want them to to have to work for it and not just walk around it so I will use geography to my advantage and again as the GM that's my prerogative um, so I don't feel too bad about that this video is going to just include the uh, drawing of the map so I'm going to include the coloring in of the map because I think that's that's been handled in that other map tutorial series that I was talking about and I just wanted you guys to see this as a as a way of of sort of seeing how it ties into a complete picture of creating an adventure I'm just thickening this up a little bit here um, to to make it more of a ravine all right so we've got some mountains there I'm just going to throw in some mountains over here Okay, so I've got some new software now, courtesy of a friend of mine online, and hopefully this will help you see a little bit more. So they're the mountains, they're done, I'm done with mountains. I drew in this little uh, whirlpool down here because I decided to. I thought it would make sense, and that's obviously on a new layer uh, over here. I'll just do that. Then if we come up here, I drew this kind of figure holding up a sword on a mountaintop uh, just as a little bit of foreshadowing of what they can expect now that i've done with the mountains i'm going to create yet again another layer and 
I'm going to now populate the swamps because that's the next most important part. So I'm trying to create a pathway where my players will start here, they'll move down across the chasm and then they'll get to the temple down there. So swamps it is, and once again I'm going to zoom in and just make sure my brush size is correct and that my paste is at 100% and then swamps are a sort of W shape uh, device with little beads all around. Sort of like papyri, papyrus weed type stuff growing everywhere. That horrid stuff that cuts you if you step too close to it. That those white sort of horsetail fronds that grow from the top and look sickly because they're basically just seeds waiting to to blast off into the wind and spread more of their vile cutting leaves everywhere. If the players go this way I will just make these swamp flowers so difficult and so deadly in terms of the damage that they do that they can't progress too far without basically just dying. I'll use cruel and hostile geography. Um, escapes me what Pratchett called it, professor of un cruel and unusual geography. I think poor old Rinswind. Um, see there's a problem there with the land. I'm just going to go back here and Fix it up quickly. All right. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I would normally have music playing, but I'm doing this for you guys, so it's just me here. And I'm hoping this new software lets you see detail that you didn't see before. Thanks to Simon for that. All right. Uh, let's throw in some swamp this way. One of the things the players might do is build a canoe out of the bits of wrecked ship. Um, and sail around the island that way. So. I'm going to subtly make it look as if that would be a bad mistake as well. And I've forgotten to switch my layers so you can see my swamps now attached to my land, which is a bit of a pity. It's not a train smash. I just like to keep my layers separate and neat so I can keep track of where I am and, and look at balance and, and that sort of thing. But so once off, I mean, you. You always want to put an effort regardless of what the situation is now. So, anyway, but it's fine. It's not too critical. All right, so I think that's pretty good swamp area there. That should keep them from coming in that way. I need to just close up this gap here on this coast. Here, quickly. Doo -doo -doo -doo. As long as you understand what the map means, you can explain it to your, you know, oh, this represents swamp, or this represents a chasm, for example. Um, do, do, do. And I don't copy and paste because cartographers of the old didn't copy and paste, really. And it also just makes the map feel a little bit more your own. I will be cheating in the game using a pre-generated map of a ship um, because the, the, the duration that's spent on the ship is minuscule in comparison to the rest of the adventure. So I've got a couple hours before the game starts and I don't really want to waste it building ships. I'd rather be doing maps uh, or a map anyway for you guys to see. This is not a dungeon crawl, it's a terrain crawl adventure. 
So not a lot of combat. Uh, I think there are scripted two, maybe three actual encounters. The rest would be me just steering them back onto track as needed. Uh, so the geography has got to be pretty cool. But again, that's not the sole focus of the mission, the adventure. It's not just terrain crossing. So it can be interesting, and, and I'll throw in a few little bits here and there. But we don't want to spend days trying to get across the island. That's not the goal. So I'm looking at the swamp going well. This area is obviously very boggy, very marshy, but inland it's a bit more rocky and desolate, so it doesn't progress too far forward into the actual continent, it's, or the island itself. Okay, different difference in terms of drawing islands versus continents is obviously scale. So, um, you don't want overdo the, the, the geography that it's so cluttered that it's crazy but at the same time unlike a large map where you would do an area it's swamp but within it it would have little forests and hills uh, in real life with the map here you draw what's actually going to be on the screen or on the map for the players alright so we've got some swamps up there that kind of keeps them there that kind of keeps this space very rocky i get a sense this is the mountainous side this is the more swampy water clogged side which kind of works for me this little island down here needs to be a swamp i feel because it's not a mountain uh, and there's a gap there so i'm just going to switch back to doodad to do that back here clink 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 and some bulrushes I'm trying to think what we call that stuff that cuts you, the, the, those horrid plants. I think of glass weed, but that name comes from. Anyway, that's the name I'll be using now. Glass weed. Um, in terms of forest, I don't want any forest because this island is actually, it was sunk and raised by the sorceress to to get access to this temple which we need to do so i'm going to build a shrine on this lake this would have been a lake if, if originally again i don't have something for a shrine so i'm going to freehand which is probably not the best idea i'm going to do that and new layer and the reason why I like working in layers now is that I can go I don't like it touching the lake and I can just grab it move it down a bit alright so there is a shrine so it's about leading the players to where I want them to go and I'm going to copy the shrine I'm holding down the old button to duplicate. There we go. And I'm going to put that shrine there. And because it's one shot, I'm going to put this shrine here as well. And then come to the mountain layer and just erase that little line there. Alright, so that does look very much like a go here, go here, go here, but again, this is a one-shot, so I've got to guide the guys in the direction that I want them to go in. That's my argument, and I'm sticking with it. I'm just going to collapse these layers in here, call this shrine. Um, what else might someone have put on this map as to, would there have been a village, perhaps? Do I want to add a village? No, I think I'm going to leave it as is for now. So, there's the map. I'm going to do the coloration now. I said I wasn't going to include that. 
uh, originally, but I think I think you guys deserve it. So hang around if you want me to see me colouring it in and how I'm going to make it work, and put names and labels and stuff uh, as I go. Otherwise, there's a very basic map where you can see I've used the geography to guide the players in the direction that I want them to go in, and um, yeah, looking forward to playing as well this evening. So thanks for watching. Those of you who want to see me colouring this in, stay with me. So as usual now, I'm going to just mask select using the uh, special mask selection wand, magic wand tool. Then I'm going to come here and just make the ocean a blue color. It doesn't really matter what color I choose now. So that is now blue. That's my ocean layer. Okay. ocean then I'm going to create another layer and call it land uh, no that would be a bad idea land color base grab selecting tool and then press control alt I no control shift I to invert my mask now I can change this to a land color but I want it to feel drudgy and dreary so I've gone with that sort of that color if you like and because I inverted my mask now it will now change so that it's highlighted the continents the continents now all that flat color so that becomes my base color from which to work and I'm quite happy with that color what I'm not happy with is now the color of the oceans and I can press Control D to remove my mask and go back to the ocean and I'm going to go edit uh, image adjustments hue saturation colorize and you see it changes it now automatically. So as I move the slider bar, I can then choose better colors or change its color. Now there was one that I shot past here. This feels about right for me. I can increase the saturation. You see it's a bright blue, but I don't want it to be a bright blue. I want this place to feel dreary. So I'm gonna just do something like that. Maybe make it a little bit darker. There we go. All right, that works for me a lot better. Okay, so there's our base color. I'm gonna make another layer now and just call this mud. And as before, so I'm going to grab my pen tool. I'm going to change its size up, checking how big it goes. You can go back there. All right, so that's about right there. And the pest is fine. I'm going to change the color now of the terrain color. And I'm going to drop it down maybe two tones, make it a little bit darker. And then I'm going to run that very casually and very quickly. Um, basically allowing the lighter color to be a beach, a beach, if you like, some sort of landing zone. So it's a little bit uh, two-tone. I come up here and I'm just doing this very quickly. I know I'm going to go over the swamp in a different color and the mountains in a different color, so I'm not too phased. I just want the, um, the, the bland, bald, empty patches, if you like, uh, to have a bit of of color to them all right come back to it and we'll fill that in oops we'll come in here come in there that's all right in there and it doesn't really matter if I go out the lines at the moment because I can just use that one tool, select everything that needs to be the right color and come back to it. So let's do that. A little bit there maybe. All right. And we're working in three tones. So and then drop it down to that one. Just darkening it every single time so that and then drawing a little bit away from the edge each time so i'm getting this three color layering and you can see i'm not paying huge amounts of attention to really where the pen goes because we're going to muddle this all up with textures later anyway it's just about getting the sense that there's more than than one color involved in this map depth if you like all right 
Then I'm going to come to the mountains. I'm going to make a new layer under the mountains. Well, under the land as well. Call this mountains. Very quickly. Da -da 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 -da. The mountains should be great. So I'm still working in the same palette that I was working before. Uh, with the land, I went from light to dark. With the mountains, I'm actually going to go from dark to light. And you'll see why when I get there. So I'm using the same kind of color range because it just helps sort of unify everything um, from a color perspectum, perspector, perspective, pick a name. I'll fill that up. Now I've got this chasm which I haven't before actually done so I'm going to keep it in the same color as the mountains but it's an inverted mountain basically and such is the life of a GM. You're prepping maps while your mates are online playing games. If you notice that pop up in the bottom corner. Alright so even though I raised over the, the map coloring with these mountains it doesn't phase me because it's not it's not a tricky thing to restore or to go and look for if I really feel that I need it but I don't all right almost done and if you've got music going this can actually be quite a relaxing a relaxing process uh, just listening to stuff mountains done so again back here I'm now going in the opposite direction so a color up to do my mids should probably change brush size at some point but it's the idea of color I want this map to feel kind of old and aged anyway. Right, last tone. And I'm going to change the size by pressing the square bracket on my keyboard. It's just a faster way of sizes without having to go up onto the top. Now I'm not going to put snow on these mountains because this island sank and has been raised by a demented necromancer. So there's no snow on these mountains. Observant players might pick that up. I doubt it. Um, now I've kind of left the chasm untouched and there's a reason for that is that the chasm is a negative space it goes into the map if you like so to highlight it like the mountains that I'm doing here seems wrong so now I'm going to come back and drop it down in a very different direction to make this much darker and I'll do that again So it really is a gash on the landscape, which I think is working out quite nicely. So that's my mountains. Whirlpool needs to be worked on. I'll come back to the whirlpool because that's ocean. So now I need to do my marshes. And again, I try and keep everything in layers. Marshes, marsh, marches. Those are the marches. That's where we march every day. Marches, color. Okay, and. Again, still staying in the spectrum, but now we've got to go a little bit more boggy. So I'm going to just drift it up towards green, but keeping it in those this greyish area. And here we'll go light to dark as well, so I'll make my brush a little bit bigger. I want them to get a sense that this is a very drab, dull space, so I'm not using highly contrasting colours. Uh, to 
describe the terrain um, and I'm working in the same color palette all the time for that very very specific reason is that I want them to feel like this is this mucky ground that's risen out of the ocean and um, that they're gonna have to slog through if they don't follow the path of least resistance let's do some squiggles in there so if you can see it's definitely a different tone to all the rest of the the structures but it's in the same in the same hue um, all right I'm gonna make my tool smaller again specifically for the final details which will be the sort of swamp gas which I'll just drop in and I made that particularly quite bright so it sticks out get this idea of this vapor oozing or into a miasma that just sits over these swamps killing everything that enters them at least that's hopefully what the players will take away from it all right, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna collapse these textures and colors down now. So I can turn them on and off, basically, quite a difference. And um, go back to my landmass, mask tool, select the mask tool, come back to the color tool, press delete, just to clean up my edges. Because I can't color within the lines. It was a skill that I didn't learn in kindergarten. All right. Go. looking neat let's go and paint the ocean quickly so I'm on my ocean level I will take this current color and just color pick it holding down well I can choose the color picture picker or I can use my pen tool and then press alt and that will bring up the color picker as well so we're now going to leave the light blue as the detailed edges I'm gonna increase my brush size because up oh, too big let's do something like that and this is going to indicate almost depth of the water the darker color being slightly deeper probably and i'm not going to go coloring everywhere because there's so much blue there's always always more blue than anything else and we don't need to spend days coloring it in as fun as it might be I'm gonna put some blue in here and in there and just finish off the coastline first and that hand-drawn look some people might prefer a more structured vector type approach. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just don't have the patience to do that. And almost done. I imagine the whirlpool eating away creating deeper channels around those little islands. All right. Come back here. Finish this off. Okay. Then I'm just going to make the tool a little bit smaller so I can add in a little bit finer detailing into these areas where the brush was just too big to do decent justice because we want it to look like different water depths usually the islands and things are the peaks of mountains so they'll have a, a little bit of a, a shoal around them that leads to a different colouring water basically in this case these are mountains so I'm going to have them basically act as the cliff that would drop off deep into the ocean Come up here, 
I mean, really, this is up to you in terms of how much detail you want to put into it. Your players are not uh, necessarily going to be hugely appreciative that you've drawn in the contour lines of the the ocean, unless that's part of the game plan. They've got to figure out how to sink something and they need deep water for that, or however you want to, to play with that idea. All right, um, make the tool big again, because now we've done with the finer detail. Again, come back here, again, choose a darker color. Still in that same sort of space. The same idea. Come down here. Just fill that in. Terrifying. They shouldn't go anywhere near it, but you never know. Players and players. That's what makes them so interesting. Is that? You just can't tell. Best laid plans of mice and men. Brush to a little smaller. Drop in there. This would be quite a nice bay, actually. If it wasn't on the island of Dementos. it then we can just increase this clean up the edges okay not bad as usual we get to that sort of point now I'm going to soften these colors up by going filter blur Gaussian blur just sort of do something like that, maybe. Something like that. Come to adjustments hue. Colorize. It's already kind of got that bluish look to it. To make it a bit darker. Uh, let's do something like that. Come to the land. I'm going to use a different filter. Uh, let's go with the lens blur. That opens up this panel here. And we can increase these to just sort of really tweak it a bit. Is that okay? All right. If we like that. And I think the white edging certainly makes it feel very. Uh, like a coastline, you might not like that look, so you can totally undo that. And just try a different blur device that, oops, <laughs> that doesn't distort it. Surface blur could work too. There we go. So we're just getting our color feel there. Okay, we'll do the same thing for this as well. Yep. Slow computer. There we go. That looks a bit better in terms of coloring. Now I um, went online and downloaded some paper textures. Hello, computer. Thank you.
Now I went online and downloaded some paper textures and uh, I'll pull those in now. And that one. Got something planned for that. So there's a paper texture. Control C, Control V gets it pasted where I want it to be pasted, which is above all the color layers but below the uh, ink layer. I'm just going to grab the binding box, open it up. Okay, yes, that's fine. And then I'm going to blur this because it's obviously pixelated quite heavily because it wasn't designed for being stretched like that. I'm going to grab the next piece of paper. Neighbors have come home. So usually I put different layers of paper and then just sort of blend them together. And I'll come back for that. This one I thought had a nice sort of papyri feel to it. So grab that. Okay, good. All right, then I'm going to go over here. Now these are all the different things that you can apply to change the way that it interacts. You can just use, you click on it and then you press the down arrow to cycle how it sits on top of the other layers. So I can go with, say, a darker color just to bring out that hashing in it, which I quite like. I'm going to do that to this layer as well. So as I press the down arrow, it changes us through different options. And that first one that we went past, and it's about just sort of scaling through and seeing what it does, working out what works for you. There was this option here where it kind of brings out some of the papyrus texture but at the same time it doesn't bring it all out and I think that's really cool and of course it's putting it both of these layers now over this layer which if I now start tweaking will reveal the actual coloring underneath um, but maybe not in the way that we wanted to that's kind of cool actually that's kind of cool but I'm gonna leave this as a normal for now and I'm going to take all three layers, shift, click to select all three, press control E, and that flattens it down into a single image. So now it's a single layer that I can now use and apply these same effects to. And it gives us a slightly different way of interpreting because instead of having all three layers affecting each other and then the color map underneath, I can now have this compressed idea affecting the color map um, separately so again it's about just getting more control that sort of thing and that's a very interesting kind of map um, I think something we, we want to keep the coloration there um, so again it's about playing around looking seeing what you think works best for a map that's not too bad and if I drop its actual opacity we get a bit of a sense of the colors that we worked so hard on uh, coming through the alternative is to move this above it and then have this change the map texture underneath we really wanted to but uh, I don't think so I kind of like this look here to be honest with you that works for me uh, maybe a little bit more subtle something like that okay and I forgot to color in my temples my shrine so I'm going to come back and do that quickly they can be a uh, light color I think that's way too big brackets again to reduce the size of your brush I want them to get a sense a real feel for these so they stand out. Come down to this one. OK. 
Okay. Everything is three tone, so everything has to stay three tone. Otherwise, your map looks strange. touching the one side to make it look like sunlight or I don't know okay turn that back on and they stand out quite nicely all right and then finally what we need to do and we'll do this on the very top layer is and I'm gonna make that black and white name things so i'm just going to throw in the name here of the paladin i'm going to look at my notes the paladin that defeated this he would have a name uthar pendarus uthar uthar pendarus and it will be here lies I was naming this map Shrine to Uthar Pandarus. That's a hideous font, isn't it? So I'm going to bring this in here so we can look at our fonts. I've got quite a few fonts loaded up. Um, what does that look like? Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. players could be given this map with this language on it and then they would have to interpret the language and they could because obviously it's written in English so uh, but I don't want them to do that that's not the point of this game tonight yeah that could work that makes it very difficult to read the size of the first letters and obviously now I need to increase my spacing get those two letters to touch that's quite dramatic and it's cryptic enough that they Okay, so that's Shrine to Uthar Pendarus. And here would be the Shrine to. And this would be the. Aether Voss, which is the kingdom from which the monster came. Here will be the tomb of Demonos. Uh, what is his name? Yes, uh, Demitos. Demitos. Okay, so it's using the other font size of 56. So now I've got to. So it just use the bigger font. So I'll drop that back to 56. And that goes to 56. And that goes to 56. Okay. All right, so if I look at that, that's not looking too bad now. 
then we can throw in some names. The Gethog Depths. And of course we do have to have a name here for this thing. And we shall call this the Chasm of something that inspires fear, horror of horror. We don't want them to come down here either. Plane of the plains of Javier. Should really standardize the size of the fonts, you know, the uppercase bold and the lowercase, but Here we shall call this the soul of Voss. No, of Ertid. Sorrow of Ertid. I like that idea. Now, if I have a look at my map, the only thing missing is the name of the island, the Isle of... Now that's an interesting one. that all together and make it the Isle of the Fallen. Now why is it? should help them with translating a little bit.
in that come on go 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 up here plop that there and then an e an s so it's very subtle and then a w and then we need a scale of some kind. Scale one inch is an inch is let's say one mile. there. See what they make of this. All right, so there's our map. We want it though to have a little feeling of maybe um, that this text is not so so bright. So I'm going to grab all the text that I can. First you move it all together and I'm going to take all of it and plop it underneath the uh, layer that is giving us color so as you can see it sort of made it feel a little bit better if it made it feel a little bit more like an old map where the writing is not so clear I may actually just drag that all the way to the top so everything gets this sort of veneer of different colors and uh, that kind of thing because I think that could work quite nicely I'm going to try and duplicate this just to see what happens And it never hurts. That looks better already, in my opinion. But let's have a look. So that's multiply, color burn. No, nah. That's pretty cool too. Overlay. Actually, I'm going to stick with overlay. I quite like overlay, uh, just because of the way that it makes it feel. Is it still legible? Well, we want them to struggle because it's got to feel like it's this ancient old map. So I went and found this, which I think is quite cool. And this we just completely paste over the top. And it's a lot smaller than I had thought it was. So I'm just going to open it up. And do that. And I'm going to go to blending options. And I'm going to bevel it. And I've gone with a smooth bevel inner bevel and the depth doesn't have to be too high it just needs to make the blood feel as if there we go as if it's clumpy if that makes sense and this can be a little bit pinker so it's not so harsh contour it on the other side Something like that. It's a bit cheesy, but uh, I think it adds something to it. So let's just look at that map again, make sure we can read what we can. Maybe this is too much. Let's take that. Like that. There we go. 
So it never hurts to play around and just look and think and see and try. And I'm just going to clip my edges just slightly. Space there. There. Here. Now, because this is going online, I need to then just save it. Well, on game, I don't need to come back to this map. And this is going to be called Isle of the Fallen. Okay, four points in makes does not need to be. Better. Let's just open up that file. And zoom in on it. Yeah, we can still read it. Alright, perfect. Good. So there is our tutorial on how to do the map. Let me know what you think. And hit that like button, hit that comment button, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more of this kind of stuff. And you can always join us on Patreon for more videos and more ways of uh, doing things for our game that we love so much. But until next time, I wish you the very happiest of gaming.